Welcome back to the Stanford Project. My name is Father Jordan Dosh, Vocation Director for the Diocese of Bismarck. As a priest, I often hear people say, Father, I wish I just had more time to pray, right? Or even uh, maybe another way in which they're able to say it is, I feel far from God right now, which might mean the time for prayer is not being put in. And, and I just wanted to have a quick episode to be able to talk about what does it mean uh, giving time for God? I'm sure you've heard the analogy of the jar with the stones, right? You have many different stones. You're trying to fit them all into this jar. If you start with the small stones, by the time you get to the big stones, you're not going to have enough space, right? But if you start with the big stones, then you can fit in the smaller ones and they kind of fit through the cracks. And the way in which the analogy is explained is that those big stones are the necessary things in your life, the things that need to get done. The small stones, right, it'd be good if it got done, doesn't necessarily need to happen. And I think as a Christian, it's very important for us to make the firm resolve that prayer is a non-negotiable, that prayer is a non-negotiable in my life because that's how I grow in my relationship with God. And if we're treating it like a small stone, then at times it won't get fit into the jar and it won't happen. And then we can feel far from God, right? So what does it mean to make it a priority? I was kind of thinking about this because oftentimes prayer is referenced to like growing in a relationship with God. And the way in which we're able to understand that as is in as a, like a relationship with another person and I was just thinking about, like, imagine, like, you're a young guy, right? You're trying to find a wife. And you have this, like, most perfect, most holy, most beautiful woman that, like, wants to be in relationship with you. She's, like, pursuing you. She wants to get to know you, right? She wants to spend time with you. And you just say, yeah, I, like, want to find someone, but I just, like, don't have the time. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe I'll, like, fit you in, like, if I have you at the end of the day. But, you know. It's like, no, like if that opportunity was there for you and you had the most amazing person, you would find time for them, right? There, there was um, a quote, um, Father Jacques Philippe, if you haven't heard of him, I highly encourage you to read some of his books. He writes these very little books and they're all amazing, right? Interior Peace, uh, the way of, uh, uh, the one on St. Therese, the way of, tr- the path of truth and love, something like that, butchered it. But uh, he, has, he has incredible books. And the one, it's called Time for God. And he has a quote in there, and he's basically talking about making time for God. And he just said, no one died of starvation because they didn't have enough time to eat. Right? No one died of starvation because they didn't have enough time to eat. Right? Imagine you're at an all-you-can-eat buffet. No one is going to die of starvation in there because they have the food. And once you get hungry enough, you're going to find time to eat because you know that your body uh, requires that, is dependent on that. And that's the same mentality that we need to have for prayer, right? No one died because they didn't have time to eat. And we need to grow in our relationship with God, so therefore we need to make time for prayer. And when we look at our day, it's very important to be able to see, and this is like my type A personality coming out of being like, when can I pray? What, what, what time of day allows me to pray best? And I'll just tell you what I do. Like, I look at my schedule for the next day, and I'm, I'm a, the vocation director. I don't have a regular daily mass at a parish. I fill in every once in a while. But that doesn't mean that I have daily mass at the same time every day, which can make it a little bit more confusing. But I look at my time for the next day, and I'd be able to, I look at it, and I say, when can I pray? And I put it in my calendar. And I know that if I'm doing something else during that time, I'm avoiding prayer, right? If I say, I'm going to pray at 6 a.m., and if at 6 a.m., I'm wandering around the house folding laundry or getting some coffee, I'm clearly avoiding prayer. Or if at 6 a.m., I'm like, well, I'll I'll do it like later in the day. No, I put that in my calendar, right? That becomes a non-negotiable, that I'm able to look at my day and I'm able to commit to whatever it is. St. Francis de Sales has a quote. He says, um, he says, everyone needs to pray for 30 minutes every day. And those that are unable to pray for 30 minutes a day need to pray for an hour a day, right? And it, it's a funny way of saying that, you know, when you, when you think that you're too busy, that's the time when you need to pray more, right? And, and I know so many good priests uh, who often say, you know, that they'll pray a holy hour in the morning 
And if they had a, a hard or a difficult day, they'll go back and pray a second holy hour. And, and that's always super edifying to me because they see that that time given to God is not t- time taken away from other people, right? Growing in our relationship with God will only help us grow in our relationship with other people. So oftentimes we look at these other stones or rocks in our life and we think that they're important and they are important, right? But having a relationship with God will only make those other things more meaningful and they'll, they'll bring more purpose to it and they'll help us to be more faithful. They'll help us be a better you know, husband, father, friend, employee, whatever it is, that that relationship with God will only help that. You know, and, and now we live in a time where everyone has an iPhone and it's very easy to be able to look at your iPhone and look at the screen time. And I'll tell you myself, like, I'm embarrassed, super embarrassed. Look at your screen time and you say, yeah, I spent whatever it is, three, four hours on my phone, but I couldn't find 30 minutes for prayer. Whatever it is. I mean, we're, we're, we're putting those other pebbles before God. That's what it is. It's hard. It's frustrating. And, it, and it's embarrassing to myself, you know, when, when we consider about other things that we're putting before God. I had a spiritual director in seminary uh, who challenged me during one Lent. He said, for as much time as you spend in technology doing non-academic things, right, whatever that is, social media, on the internet, things, things that I don't necessarily need to be doing for academics, however much time that is, I have to spend that equivalent amount of time in the chapel. So, you want to spend an hour on YouTube? Great, go right ahead. You got to go spend an hour in the chapel, right? That's, that's a great challenge. That's a tough challenge. And, and it's something that we can't get around because it's very clear. It's right in front of us. We see how much it is. And we know that our relationship with God is a priority. So why don't we make it one? You know, it's, it's one that I struggle with that's hard. But I know that it's important. Another priest once told me, he said, if you want to find out what someone holds as a priority in their life, look at their calendar and look at their checkbook, right? Or I guess no one really uses a checkbook anymore. Look at their bank account. What, what, what are they spending their time on? What are they spending their money on? Because that'll tell you what is most important. And it's just very hard to be able to see that if I have this most incredible person that has ever existed that's desiring to be in a relationship with me, and I'm just like, yeah, I want to spend five hours on TikTok today instead of like 10 minutes in prayer. That's the stone that I'm putting in the jar first. And that's why I feel far from God. And that's a tough pill to swallow. But that doesn't mean that it isn't something that I can personally change in my life today. That this is something that looking at my day tomorrow, I can make a change in. I'm not saying we all need to be contemplative nuns, right? Especially, you know, those mothers that are home with multiple kids, they're probably not called to pray four holy hours a day. Their life looks a little different, right? They have kids all over the place. I don't care what it looks like. Every single person needs to pray every single day. That's what it comes down to. And we need to be able to find time and make it a priority so that we can grow in that relationship with God. So I just ask you to be able to look at your day tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow? When can you pray? Put it in your calendar. Just be faithful to that time. Be honest with God. Tell him what is making you excited, what is making you sad. And it's through that that we can grow in our relationship with him because he wants to be in relationship with you. So please know of my prayers. Please be faithful to prayer. Please pray that I'm faithful to prayer. And it's through that that we may build up the kingdom of God and that all of us may become closer to God. God bless.